Hello, my name's Stephen Foote and I'm a documentary cameraman working in the British film and television industry and I originally started my life as a, doc as a stills photographer. Um, this is me hard at work, not probably, filming in Sierra Leone in 2021, I think. Um, anyway, it was around about that time that Covid struck and suddenly I couldn't really do any filming at all and I had to revert back to doing some stills photography to keep me busy. So I spent a lot of time doing landscape photography, um, particularly around the, the area where I live in South Oxfordshire, so the Berkshire Downs, which is a fantastic place for big skies and, and black and white scenes, um, which I love really. And I've always liked black and white photography because it keeps me um, I think it, it, it's, it's about the tones and textures that I'm interested in which you don't get with colour and I think that you have to you have to think about things in black and white when you photograph them in colour you see them in colour but you, you, you can appreciate what they're going to look like when you see them in black and white um, and these are largely photographs which have been converted from from colour images because that's what you have to do these days in the digital world but I come from a film background where you had a choice of having colour film on your in your camera or you could have black and white film in your camera and I often have black and white film partly because it was easier to process and I just always thought it had a better nicer feel to it really and you get this there's so much drama in, in, in black and white photography if you can capture the scenes correctly and a bit of post-production, not a lot of post-production, but a little bit of post-production to make things just a bit more dramatic. But no no more than you would do with a piece of film in a dark room, for instance. So these these images are never you know, super duper enhanced or anything like that. They're manipulated a little bit, but not, not to any large degree. And I love the red filter, always did love the red filter, which renders blue skies black and gives you these amazing textures and tones and does fantastic things with clouds. So COVID came along and caused us all sorts of grief and I came up with this idea that perhaps because I had a press card I could go into my local town which was Oxford and photograph Oxford or film Oxford even actually deserted and I had no idea what it was going to be like so I, I drove into town early one Easter morning um, in 2020 I guess it was and I discovered a deserted city. And I've, I'm from Oxford, I've lived in Oxford most of my life, and I've never seen Oxford completely deserted. This is one of the main roads in Oxford, the Cowley Road, at nine o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday. Nothing in sight, no cars, nothing. Extraordinary. The shots all boarded up. It was quite extraordinary. I've just never seen that kind of quietness. It was like almost like a, out of a film where you kind of come across this this desolation and you know everybody's I don't know died from something and that everybody's just locked up indoors and shut away and nobody was out at all everybody took this terribly seriously which is the right thing to do I guess so you get into the town centre and you've got the paradox of the image of the construction site on the right here with the people walking down the busy street but the reality is the street isn't busy at all for the first time ever so normally you've got the hustle and bustle of, of a pedestrian precinct deserted. So you look down the, the, the these these empty streets and you marvel at it actually because it's so quiet as well there's no there's no buses there's no traffic there's there's no sound at all and it's magnificent and you know nobody was there at all it was qu quite extraordinary empty shopping centers which you would normally expect to be heaving with people at you know 9 o'clock 10 o'clock in the morning completely deserted the main street going to Oxford, you know, outside Magdalen College, empty. St Giles, a major thoroughfare going through Oxford, not a car in sight. Well, there are a couple of cars, but there are no people. It's just completely empty. And what a great time to be able to venture out and see this city in its emptiness. And some people said to me afterwards that to see Oxford like this is just... Uh, you know, it's, it's very sad to see Oxford like this big cities should be busy, but it, the architecture here is so rich that it's really nice to see the the architecture in isolation, and it's never been done before. You know, nobody's ever seen Oxford like this ever. Some of the back streets perhaps are less populated with cars and people, but 
generally, you know, the, there's always people around, but Easter 2020, there was nobody. So you get all these iconic images of these iconic buildings. Well, well not their iconic buildings um, uh, presenting themselves, and they're just unique. Uh, it's just a completely unique set of pictures. There was another guy who did a lot of these pictures, but he did them at night, which are equally fantastic pictures, actually. But they they show a different side of Oxford, really. Um, the Radcliffe camera is one of the you know this is the main one of the main pedestrian areas, I suppose, in Oxford with students milling around and you know, dawdling through. This used to be open to traffic in the 1970s, but they closed that down, and so you don't get anything now. No builders' vans or anything. You get bicycles, but there'd be you know, lots of bicycles, but you don't, you know, just didn't see anybody in bicycles. The High Street and St. Mary the Virgin Church and All Souls College with nobody in it. Looking down St. Aldate's towards Christ Church, nobody in it the covered market usually busy with vans and people buying their groceries and things completely deserted it reminded me of a bit of a doctor who film that they made when the daleks invaded and just everybody stayed off the tr off the streets it was just like that this is broad street which is normally teeming with cars and it's completely empty ah solitary figure outside the old bank hotel on the high street looking down towards queen's college and here we did have a small uh, family because they families were allowed to go out on bicycles and exercise and this was a family who were trundling down the high street on their bikes with a couple of buses which were all the buses that I saw were empty nobody in them at all looking up the high street Queen's College and St Mary and the Virgin Church behind the background and again Christ Church in St Aldate's completely empty a couple of people here just walking, perhaps they've gone out to do some shopping or something like that. But essentially, there's nobody there. And these pictures are just marvellous because you can just, you know, the clear blue skies and you can use the red filter and the yellow filters to, to you know, bring the buildings out in all their glory. And you just you just see the buildings and you don't see anything else um, because there's nothing to, to distract you. So it's a very, yeah, it's an incredible time to be able to see Oxford as as it is, and it's a bit of a photographer's dream, I think, really. Um, even down on the Isis and the early morning mist uh, rising from the the, the 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 cold night before, long bridges, you know, just just down from Donington Bridge, and deserted boat houses on the Isis as well, and the river as it drives through, as it winds through Christchurch Meadows. And Port Meadow as well, which is again usually busy with people cycling to work, and you know you can see the horses in the background doing what they normally do. Um, and back to St Aldate's again, and a deserted. Why well, I keep saying deserted? I mean, there's just nothing to talk about. But you have to take the pictures of, at face value. Pembroke College. Um, Carfax, which is normally heaving with people and nobody there. It's just really quite remarkable. And the King's Arms and Hollywell Street. I mean, these are all famous sites to anybody who knows Oxford. They, they're, they're all familiar sites. And, uh, yeah. The Sheldonian Theatre and the, um, the Clarendon Building just off Broad Street. And finally, almost penultimately, um, Magdalen College Tower rising above Magdalen Bridge, nobody in sight. And one of my iconic photographs, I think, of the sky above the Sheldonian Theatre, devoid of people. Thank you for watching.